Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to draw some trees focusing on this rough broken tree bark. It's going to be done in charcoal. As always, don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, comment and check out my other videos. Let's get to it. I'm going to work mostly with the Kohino Jaconda charcoal pencils. But I'm going to start with a sketch and I'm going to do that with one of the Kohino Silky Black pencils. The paper I'm working on is about 200 GSM, 220 actually GSM, and it's about uh, 9 times 12 inches in size. My initial sketch is very simple. I have this um, a large tree in the foreground kind of splitting into two large uh, boughs. And in the background, I'm going to have some foliage, some branches. The key here will be creating contrast between the foreground and the background. I'm going to start with some charcoal, with some charcoal powder. I dab the paper towel into the charcoal powder. And now I'm just dabbing that on my paper. And you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. I'm actually creating some suggestions of canopies in the background, some foliage in the background. Because I am kind of going to be stacking uh, darker and darker and more and more defined elements as I approach the foreground. Did a little bit of dabbing with my brush as well. So I just want to make it look like there's something going on there in the background. That should do it for now. Just a few touches with a brush. And I can move on uh, with drawing some more specific uh, detail. Now I'm going to draw some branches here in this background area. Just trying to make the shape natural looking. Uh, so like I said, the key here will be contrast or tension between the darker elements in the foreground and the lighter elements in the background. Because the tree and the, the tree boughs in the foreground are going to be very dark. And there's going to be lots of detail on the tree bark. So I'm adding some more trees and branches over there in the background. Just trying to come up with some natural looking shapes. It's kind of difficult to explain how this is done, but a couple of general rules is that, uh, are that you have to try to make those, uh, those branches twist and bend every which way, and you have to make them taper as they grow out. did a bit of blending with a brush and a tutelion and I can do even do a little bit of drawing with a tutelion when it picks up a little bit of charcoal I can draw some lighter lines with it but I shouldn't overdo it with it and now I'm drawing some suggestions of foliage using that tutelion because like I said a tutelion can also be a drawing tool and the marks it makes are very light now on top of those lighter marks I'm going to be adding some uh, darker, more defined marks, and for that I'm going to be using willow charcoal. So, in most of the cases, when I, when I do charcoal drawings, my charcoal pencils are my main drawing tools, but 
I like to use other stuff in addition to that. I like to use willow charcoal or vine charcoal. And I like to use charcoal powder. Here, for the foliage, willow charcoal is going to prove to be very, very useful. You can see how you can create these small marks that look like foliage. And you can do that with ease. It takes a little bit of patience, though. But because uh, willow charcoal is so soft, it allows you to create a lot of these marks very quickly and now I'm dabbing on them with a bristle, bristle brush uh, because I want to soften them a little bit and make them just a little bit less defined because this is the background or it's a part of the background anyway so I want to add a little bit more uh, volume and density to the, to the uh, foliage and I want to make them a little bit less defined. Um, now I'm going to move on to the tree trunk here and like I said the tree trunk and, and that large bough which is splitting off to, to the side that's going to be uh, way darker than this background. So there are a couple of ways I can approach this. I can do a bit of shading with my charcoal pencil or I can just establish the darker areas quickly with a piece of willow charcoal. Willow charcoal is probably the fastest way to do it. So a very quick way of defining larger relationships between lighter and darker areas. And this whole area, the, the tree trunk, is going to be very dark. I'm going to push that in with my finger. Trying not to go over uh, the edge on the right. Oh, and by the way, as you can see, I don't really care if I produce rough texture here because I want the tree to have rough texture. I'm deliberately going to use my pencil in such a way as to produce a lot of texture. Now, the pencil I switched to is, of course, my Gioconda, Kohinoor Gioconda uh, Extra Soft Charcoal Pencil. And that's what I'm going to be doing most of the work with. I'm dragging my pencil to produce um, random rough texture, but it's not entirely random because here and there I'm trying to make some suggestions of some deeper cracks and darker areas. I'm going to push that in gently with my finger. This is going to soften the texture a little bit, but it's not going to ruin it completely. I can always bring, ba bring back that texture by going over it one more time with my pencil. The reason why I pushed it in with my finger is because what I, felt, uh, I felt that it wasn't dark enough. So I cleaned up the edge a little bit and now I'm going to work on the details a little bit. I'm going to start defining these smaller cracks in between these pieces or segments of tree bark. And uh, the what I'm trying to make it look like is that there are some parts of the tree where we have a little bit more of the tree bark and there are others where the tree bark has, is cracked or fallen off and those will be the darker, the darker shadow areas and then we're get, just going to have some slightly longer cracks going vertically down the length of the tree trunk and then some smaller cracks going horizontally in between them. 
On top of that, I'm going to be working a little bit with my pencil eraser. This is a Kohino pencil eraser. It's kind of like a soft eraser in a pencil. And I can use that to pull some uh, lighter details, to draw some lighter details on the tree bark, increasing the range of value and um, uh, making the texture of the tree look even more rough and interesting and at the same time making everything appear more three-dimensional. Uh, so uh, another thing that I can often use in addition to the usual uh, drawing methods is just dragging my pencil and creating some random texture. But here in this stage, uh, for the most part, I'm going to be trying to define some of these larger, darker cracks in the tree bark. A uh, few of these circular shapes here and there, like knots that form around the places where uh, a branch uh, has been uh, broken off. And I want to have a lot of these a lot of these cracks are really interesting looking rough tree bark and like I said going on top of that with a pencil eraser and just uh, erasing a little bit of charcoal here and there makes it look way more interesting and detailed and, um, and three-dimensional because when you lift up a little bit of value from one of those lighter segments they pop out even more in relation to the darker shadow areas and it feels like they're sticking out and it feels a lot more three-dimensional. I'm back to using a piece of willow charcoal and I'm going to be drawing some more foliage here in the background. So I want to make it look like uh, this tree is in the foreground and um, we have a whole bunch of trees and canopies in the background so it's basically like looking through the branches of a tree like you're there among the trees that was the idea And uh, what, I, what I do when I draw foliage with willow charcoal like this, I try to vary the direction and the shape of those marks because you don't want to make them look too uniform. That would make the foliage look very unnatural and uh, artificial and you don't want to do that. So you want to vary the shape, the size, the direction, the angle of your marks and that will make it look way more natural. And you, you also need some uh, density so you need to make a sufficient amount of those marks otherwise it won't look very convincing so you need to be patient and add a lot of that foliage. I'm back to, uh, to working on the uh, on the tree trunk and its texture. I'm going to draw some larger cracks here. Now I have to tell you something about uh, how the charcoal pencil works. When you want these really, really dark marks, you don't want to blend them too much because when you start blending and moving the material around, you'll actually end up with areas of slightly lighter value. Your blending tools will actually lift up a little bit of a little bit of a material and uh, you'll end up with uh, something that is a bit lighter than what you init uh, initially intended. So um, the thing is that when you're drawing these uh, darker details or details that, that are supposed to remain darker, you want to put that down as finishing touches and you don't want to use uh, your blending tools over it because you want them to remain that dark. Now, in the initial stage, when I was laying down the, um, the basic value, the base tone, if you will, and the base texture, I did a bit of blending, and in those areas where I wanted the tree trunk to appear a bit darker, I pushed the charcoal in with my finger, because uh, the texture of your skin and the oils in your skin make the charcoal stick to the surface of the paper a little bit better. So that works a bit better, your, your fingers work a bit better than 
some other blending tools like for example brushes or tortillions when, when you want to produce some dark areas but you, when you want some really dark fine details you just want to sharpen your pencil and put down those finishing details on top without uh, using any blending tools uh, over them so basically uh, at this stage I'm just going to be drawing the tree bark with very limited uh, use of blending tools if, if any and uh, <clears throat> another thing that, like I said, uh, when I was drawing this tree bark, I like to make both these horizontal and vertical cracks to to try to sort of isolate some uh, individual parts of that tree bark, and in order to make them stick out or stand out even more, and make them look even more three-dimensional, I'm using this pencil eraser which keeps getting shorter and shorter but it still gets the job done and because it allows for more precision you could do the same thing with a kneaded eraser but uh, the kneaded eraser has to be reshaped and remolded all the time and um, it, it just works a little bit differently than this pencil eraser there are some advantages and disadvantages obviously um, but I'm just going back in, adding some lighter details here and there. Um, but it's not entirely random, by the way. I'm trying to add those uh, and stay consistent with the light source which is coming from above. So most of these marks, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, they're on the part of the of those broken tree bark segments uh, which are facing up and. Uh, that that makes them look a little more um, natural and uh, logical, if you will, and it uh, just makes everything more three-dimensional. Now, once I finish the work with the pencil eraser, I can go over some of the areas which I need, which I feel need to be a little bit darker. I can add a touch of value here and there. I can go in, go back in and deepen uh, some of these some of these cracks. Maybe rework them a little bit. Or uh, another thing that I can do is I can just drag my pencil over the surface. I can gently drag my pencil over the surface of that tree and um, make it look more rough and create an illusion of detail by creating some random texture. So here at the bottom, I need a little bit, more, a little more foliage, and then I'm going to move on uh, with this, with this part of the tree trunk to the to the right. I'm going to cover that with willow charcoal as well to establish this darker base stone. I want to make it stand out against the background immediately. I'm just going to put down a lot of willow charcoal. This is very soft material, easy to blend. It's easy to make it both darker and lighter. It looks like a mess at first, but once you start blending, it actually gets a lot smoother. But you can control the amount of val uh, the amount of texture, because in this case, uh, we don't want it to look too smooth. I don't really care about these lines. In fact, I want to produce a lot of texture. Uh, I'm going to add some details to the background here and there. And uh, a little more foliage. So the interesting thing about both your tortillions and your erasers is that they can be used as blending tools, as uh, drawing tools rather. Normally when you think about drawing you you think about pencils because you're assuming that pencils will be your drawing tools but when you start working with erasers you realize that erasers in drawing especially when you're doing such detailed realistic drawings erasers are not really used so much for cleaning up and correcting mistakes they are mostly used as drawing tools for drawing lighter marks and areas of lighter value similarly your blending tools even though their primary purpose is blending 
They can also be used as drawing tools. They lift up a little bit of charcoal and you can move them around. You can draw with them just like you would, would with a pencil. Now this, uh, this part of the tree on the right, which is kind of like a, a large bough growing to the side, I guess. Um, it's uh, going to have an even more rough tree bark and I'm, I'm going to make it look like <clears throat> some more of that tree bark has fallen off. So it's going to be even more cracked. Uh, with a lot of these interesting smaller shapes. And uh, the tree trunk is going to be bare you know, on uh, some of those uh, some of those parts in the middle. But I'm just going to try to define some of these smaller shapes first and then I'm going to go over that with my pencil. Because the additional work that I'm going to do with the pencil is um, just shading, adding texture and defining some of the slightly smaller shapes here and there. The thing is that when you're working on something like this, you're just making some suggestions of shapes because it doesn't have to be very accurate. It's not like you're drawing a portrait. So if you just don't like a certain shape, you go over it uh, either with your pencil or your blending tools and just modify it. And you can just sort of go, go with the flow, go with whatever looks best with, uh, for you. And that's one of the great things about drawing landscapes, especially trees, tree trunks, foliage. You can draw in a more loose, relaxed style, not worrying too much about, uh, about how exactly everything is supposed to look. Um, because the tree bark here, now we have a part of the tree, of the bough which is kind of bare because the tree bark has fallen off. So, um, because uh, the tree bark is raised slightly above that bare part of the bough, we're going to have a little bit of shadow under it. So I, I need to find a way to make those pieces of tree bark which are left stand out against the rest of the uh, against the rest of the bow against the rest of the surface of the bow and the key to doing that of course is again shading and range of value now the good thing about brushes is when you go over the shaded areas uh, you don't entirely destroy the texture as you can see I went over all of the pencil work I've done, but uh, the lines didn't disappear entirely. They got softened a little bit, they got a little bit less noticeable, but they're still there. And I can always uh, bring them back and maybe reinforce them a little bit with some darker lines, darker values. But the good thing about brushes is that they often allow you to preserve a lot of the, a lot of the original texture but I can just keep adding some more smaller shapes some more texture and some more shadows uh, or around or under these uh, pieces of tree bark which are sticking out now I'm going to work on this bottom part here decide how much of the bow is going to be covered uh, with tree bark and how much of it is going to be bare and again you can just draw loosely go with the shapes that you like no pressure and no worries about how exactly it's supposed to look if you been doing a lot of portraits I highly recommend doing at least a little bit of 
uh, landscape or wildlife every now and then because portraits are kind of intense for me and now right now I'm doing a series of colored pencil portraits if you've been following my channels you could see that I've done a lot of colored pencil artwork and it's mostly portraits and I just wanted to do something slightly different and go a little bit go back to charcoal a little bit because I enjoy working in charcoal as well so I'm going to do a few drawings in charcoal and I always like drawing landscapes and trees and uh, a lot of my viewers do as well, apparently. Uh, honestly, my channel hasn't been doing that great lately. The views have dropped, but that's probably the case for everybody. And if you like my content, if you enjoy watching my videos, uh, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and um, and check out my other videos because I have lots of stuff on my channel. I have hundreds of videos. But for those who want to see longer videos and who want to see more content, who want to see full-length narrated videos, who want to see the, role, uh, the drawing process in real time, you should really check out my Patreon. Because uh, I have a lot of content there. I have lots of videos longer videos with some additional explanations some discussions about materials and things like that so if you want to uh, if you want to see that additional content you should check out my patreon uh, but i still think you can get a lot of value on this channel as well because even though i have some time lapses uh, most of my videos are <coughs> quite lengthy, quite long. Most of my videos are at least half an hour. Now I'm going to do some work with a pencil eraser. <clears throat> and notice how this bow on the right is a little bit lighter, so it's, get, it's catching a bit more light. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit lighter overall then the tree trunk on the left the light is coming mostly from above and it's coming a little bit more from the left than, than the right so the right side of this bow is going to be a little bit darker um, I'm just going over I'm going over this tree bark and adding some smaller details and just going back and modifying the tree bark on the left as well. I can go back and forth like that sometimes if I don't like some of the some of the details that I've already done in some parts of the drawing that I've already done. And I can just make some smart, smaller, minor modifications here and there. Um, it's the randomness, uh, randomness of these shapes and, crap, and cracks that actually uh, helps to make the tree bark look more realistic. If you make it look too uniform, if you make the lines look too parallel or the spacing exactly the same, it, it won't look good at all. So you want to make it look as random and as irregular as possible kind of like an actual tree it's the same thing like when you were drawing those branches or foliage you want to make it look irregular and almost unpredictable you want to surprise yourself as well when you draw these shapes because that's uh, that's how you come up with some of the best shapes and it's the same thing with this tree bar here just want to go in with no plan whatsoever creating some random shapes and that actually produces some of the some of the best looking results the trick here of course is uh, conveying that three-dimensional appearance to the viewer so that when you're looking at this rough texture you can feel like 
some parts of that surface of the tree are uh, slightly raised above others like that broken tree bark is half an inch raised above the rest of the surface of the of the tree and um, it's not as hard as it looks like I said it's mostly done uh, with uh, varying the amount of value and adding a bit of shadow around those shapes which are supposed to be sticking out and I deliberately left some parts of the tree bark in between the larger bare segments I left some parts of the tree bark there like they still haven't fallen off or been broken off because that makes it look more natural and random again going back in and adding some details with my pencil eraser and I use it not just to define some specific details but I also use it to add some random texture here and there I sometimes just drag it horizontally or make some short tapered strokes here and there but um, I just want to create a really rough looking texture that will uh, confuse and entertain the eye of the viewer and trick them into thinking into thinking that they're looking at something really really complex that I've spent many hours working on when in fact a drawing like this can be done in just a couple of hours I don't know exactly how long it took but I think it took about a couple of hours maybe a little bit more again I'm dabbing uh, with a with my uh, paper towel dipped in charcoal powder adding some random vague shapes or suggestions of shapes in the back and then going over that with a piece of willow charcoal because now I'm going to be drawing a lot of foliage I'm going to be drawing a lot of these smaller marks again the key to doing this is not just drawing a sufficient number of these marks, it's also trying to vary their shapes and angle and direction a little bit so that they would look a bit more organic, more realistic rather than artificial and uniform. I'm going to add these in between those larger branches and boughs in the back I want to have some suggestions of trees in the background because that will add depth to my drawing you can feel like you're among the trees like there are lots of trees and lots of foliage behind this tree in the foreground that's the uh, general idea that I'm trying to convey adding some more foliage here at the bottom and dabbing, uh, dabbing on that with a brush because I want to soften those marks a little bit make them less defined and give them more density because I can't draw every single leaf I, I, I want to draw clusters of leaves that kind of look convincing so I am using my blending tools to make it look like there's more of them than there actually is and cleaning some shapes of those uh, branches and boughs removing the tape and finishing the rest of the drawing here at the bottom making this part at the bottom and on the right a little bit darker adding some more shadow there because that's facing away from my light source so I'm just going to go over that with my charcoal pencil making that a bit darker increasing the range of value making everything more three dimensional and making that darker shape in the foreground stand out even more the drawing is now done I put my signature in the lower right corner but I wasn't quite happy with with the appearance of the branches in the background so I just decided to add a few more it's not a major 
change, but I just want it some slightly different shapes, I suppose. It's not too late to make some minor changes, but I do like the shape of these branches a little bit better now. But the most important thing, of course, is the contrast between the tree in the foreground, which is a bit darker, and the lighter shapes or suggestions of shapes in the background. Once again, if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification icon maybe if you want to, give me a like and comment, for longer videos check out my Patreon. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this drawing of trees and this rough tree bark and the texture that I produced. I'm just putting down some finishing touches before I wrap things up. And I think this is it. This is the finished drawing. I want to thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.